Oh dear, here we go. Let's start again. Okay, settling in, allowing the crown of the head and the sternum to lift up towards the ceiling. Roll the shoulders up and back, allow them to settle away from your ears. Draw the navel gently in towards the spine. And begin to just travel along the root of your breath, following it with your mind's eye as it moves in through the nostrils down the throat, into the chest and belly. Noticing the response of the body as you fill up the expansion, belly, the ribs. And noticing the gentle retreat, the softening or relaxation effect as you exhale, all that Stale air out. Finding a nice smooth rhythm for the breath, trying to match inhale and exhale in terms of length. So layering a count, perhaps three or four or five on the inhale. Allowing the breath to be as long as you can allow it to be without forcing, right? So if five is too much for you, just back it down. You might notice as you deepen and lengthen the breath, there's this settling in this calming effect on the body. And there's this quieting of the chatter in the mind, that incessant talk, self-talk, often self-critic. So we can let go of all of that when we breathe with mindfulness, resting all of our awareness on that breath in and out. Layering on ujjayi, if you like, restricting the back of the throat, creating that beautiful resonating sound and sensation in the body, like a wave moving out from the shore on the inhale, back in on the exhale. So three more of these deep, full belly breaths. The deepest inhale of the day. And the fullest exhale of the day. And as you complete your third breath, or third exhale, just let go of that technique of counting. Allow, allow the body to breathe on its own naturally without a lot of instruction, it knows how. And allow your mind to turn its attention to how your body feels this morning. So you might, as you explore, bring a little movement into areas that you're exploring, maybe the neck is stiff, so you might nod it or move it from side to side, your shoulders or back. Might be stiff, you might roll them or gently move the torso. You might find the low back to be tender or sore, so find a little bit of movement. And if movement isn't really pleasant, you might just bring your breath to the areas that need your, your love and affection this morning. And as we move through the practice, modifying your practice to 
honor those areas that need to be um, modified, right? Connecting the mind and body, allowing them to communicate, to tell you what is right or not right for movement today. And then opening your eyes, ah, we'll begin to move into the cervical spine. So take a nice breath in, let, uh, let the chin be parallel to the floor. And on your exhale, just nod your chin to your chest. Keep your shoulders away from your ears. Breathe a couple of breaths here into the tops of the shoulders, the back of the neck. Just notice where you feel it. And then let your chin come through neutral up towards the ceiling, keeping the back of the neck long though. So not throwing the head all the way back, but just kind of lifting the back of the skull and pressing it backwards as the chin lifts. Nice long neck in this lift. Exhaling back to the chest. And inhaling, bringing the chin up. And exhaling, bringing the chin back down. Keeping the chin down, take a breath in. Exhale, right ear to right shoulder. So just a little lean over to the side. <clears throat> Inhale back through center, exhale to the other side. So it's not so important how close you get to your shoulder with your ear. You're just kind of rolling across the chin, across the chest, maybe discovering certain places that would feel good with a little extra attention. So you might just let yourself pause in a tender place. Breathe into the tenderness. Drawing the chin through center to the other side when you're ready. So there's no schedule here. We're just exploring how things feel. Bring your chin back to center when you're ready. And then bring the chin to neutral. Take a peek over your right shoulder. Go as far as you comfortably can. Inhale back through center, exhale to the other side. So just letting the head move from side to side, keeping the shoulders relaxed throughout the movement. Bringing your chin back to center. Sweep your arms out to the side, up overhead. Hold on to your left wrist with your right hand. Reach nice and high towards the ceiling. On an exhale, take a little lean over to your right. A couple of little bobs, gentle movement in and out, finding a place that's comfortable to pause and, and hold. <clears throat> so we know that we've um, gone too far into a lean if our breath is compromised. So find a place where you can hold and breathe nice full breaths. Taking the gaze down towards the floor. And then up towards the ceiling. Bringing the chin to neutral, facing forward. Bring the arms up overhead, switch hands, left hand, fingers wrap the right wrist, reach nice and high towards the ceiling, take that lean to the other side and allow the bobbing to help you find that just right place. <clears throat> and when you find it, just pause there, breathe into the right ribs this time. And let your head turn down towards the floor. Noticing any tightness in the shoulders or neck here. So letting the exhale release any tension or holding. Turn the gaze up towards the ceiling. And then back to neutral, chin faces forward. Bring yourself all the way up. Exhale the arms down by your sides. Rest your hands on your lap. Roll your shoulders up towards your ears, back to the back of the room, let them settle away. So make a few big, big shoulder rolls, moving backwards, bobbling the head, keeping that 
neck as relaxed as you can. <clears throat> and then finding a place to pause to reverse direction, bring those shoulder rolls forward. And then bring your hands down onto your lap. Big breath in through the nose. And a big sigh out through the mouth. So neck and shoulders, upper back, all beginning to warm, perhaps feeling a little bit of energy, warmth. <clears throat> Moving into the arms, into the elbows, wrists and fingers. We're gonna reach our fingers out to the side wall and then bring them into cup our shoulders. So we're gonna open and close. Inhaling and exhaling. So each inhale expands the reach. Exhale brings the hands back to the shoulders. Inhaling to open and exhaling to close. Always keeping a nice tall spine. When the hands are back to the shoulders, exhale the elbows together. Inhale, open up, really press those elbows back, draw those shoulder blades together, exhale, elbows together. Inhale, open, and exhale, close. So you might, as you open, see if you can pick a nut up, imagine that you're picking a nut up with your shoulder blades there, like they're little nutcrackers squeezing together as you open, exhale, as you come together, inhaling and exhaling. So the expansion on the inhale, the closing on the exhale, keep them open on your next inhale. And then bring your arms out to the side, make fists and roll your wrists, relax your shoulders. We're working those shoulders on the upper back. So if you're feeling tired, you can put a little bend in your elbow if that's something that would be um, being kind to your tender spots today, if that's where you're feeling it. Bring your hands down onto your lap. And then bring your hands out in front of you, face the palms up. We're gonna bring our pinkies to touch our thumb. And then we're gonna open up our hand, bring our ring finger to our thumb, middle finger to thumb and pointer to thumb. Opening up then the pointer to the thumb. Keep the other fingers nice and open as you bring the middle finger to the thumb, ring finger and pinky. Keep your hands um, facing up, fingers um, nice and wide. And then um, we're gonna very slowly bring our fingers together and then curl our fingers into a fist, seeing if you can really appreciate each little knuckle as it bends in towards the fist. Open up as you uncurl, fingers are together, then spread the fingers wide, maybe a little wiggle. Bring the fingers together and then curl one joint at a time all the way into that fist and then open it up, spread the fingers and wiggle them. Bring the fingers of the right hand together and then take your left hand to the palm of that right hand. Keep this arm as straight as you can. To just take a pull back, getting a nice stretch into your forearm and into your carpal tunnel here. So the straighter the arm, the uh, more intense the stretch. If it's too intense, put a little bend in that elbow. And then bring your hand facing backwards. Take that left hand to the back, draw the hand back. And then bring the hand out to the uh, front. We're gonna do the other side. So we're gonna turn our palm down, pull our hand in, Again, that straight arm on the left side is gonna intensify the stretch in that forearm. And then bringing your palm up, we're gonna pull that wrist back. So bring it back, straighten the arm, fingers together. Reach your fingers forward, give them a nice wiggle, start wiggling through the fingers, the hands, the palms, the wrists, the elbows, the shoulders, the torso. And then bring your hands down onto your lap. So a little bit of blood flow energy moving in each of the fingertips. You might feel that happening. A warming of the fingers and the palms and the wrists and the forearms, elbows and shoulders. 
think we got them all. <laughs> Working our way down into our hips. So bring our feet, bring your feet a little wider so that they're about as wide as the legs of your chair. Take your hands on your lap, draw your navel in, root down through your feet. So really support yourself through your legs and begin to make big sweeping circles. Start slow and small and then allow those circles to get larger. So the action is happening right in our hip joint. Spine is staying nice and long. We're not rounding as we come forward. And then a switch direction move in the opposite direction. Eventually coming to stillness as you're reaching the heart forward. You can support yourself with your hands on your thighs or walk your feet a little closer, bring your thighs a little closer together to support your torso as you fold over your lap, let the head turn down, let the fingers kind of finger paint the floor if you like, or hold on to opposite elbows. Seated rag doll here. You might gently nod or shake the head if that would feel good. Taking a big breath in through the nose. And a big, big sigh out through the mouth. Root down through the feet. Engage the muscles in the legs. Sweep the arms out to the side. Bring yourself all the way up. And exhale your hands to your heart. Nice. Opening your eyes, take your right leg up, give it a nice little squeeze in towards your chest. Nice little stretch for the low back on the right side. And while you're doing that stretch, we can do a little bit of rotation in the ankle. So a nice crackle, perhaps. And reverse direction. Point and flex. And then keep that foot flexed, bring your ankle onto your thigh. Keep that knee above the ankle and the ankle of the right leg on top of the thigh. But if you need to modify, you can just kind of extend that left leg and bring that right foot down on the shin. Just don't press on your knee. <clears throat> a nice breath in to extend the spine, nice tall spine here. And then maybe an exploration as you lean forward. <clears throat> So it's so important uh, in yoga to keep the mind present, right? So if you find your mind is drifting, I invite you to encourage it back so that you can really feel how these movements are affecting your body, how it, they feel. And you know, as a long-term students, that pain is not acceptable. <laughs> So always honoring uh, the resistance your body presents to you, breathing into that resistance. And perhaps over the course of several breaths, there's a little release, but it's okay if that doesn't happen. But be open to it, be aware of it, be present. Bring yourself all the way back up to vertical and remove that foot, bring it back down to the ground. Take the left leg up and in, give it a nice squeeze, rotating the ankle as always, and reversing direction. Pointing and flexing, curling the toes and spreading the toes. And then keeping that ankle flexed, taking that left ankle onto the right thigh. Again, just noticing what's present in the left hip this time. Breathing right into the space that's tight. So the exhale is the release, the softening agent, the downy. Exploring, <clears throat> excuse me, forward movement if that's right for you. <clears throat> and 
And then bringing yourself all the way back up to vertical, taking that left foot down onto the ground. We'll do three rounds of seated sun salutations before we stand up today. So finding that posture, that seated mountain pose, stacking all the joints, bringing the arms down by your sides. On your inhale, sweep your arms up overhead. And on your exhale, come to cactus arms. On your inhale, a little lean forward. And on your exhale, glide your hands over your knees down towards your ankles, let the head turn down. Inhale, halfway lift to that nice long spine. And exhale, fold. Inhale, root the feet down, engage the muscles in the legs, sweep the arms out to the side, rise up, and exhale, hands through heart center and back by your sides. Two more, inhale up, and exhale to cactus. Inhale, lean, and exhale, fold. Inhale to that long spine, and exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse it, sweep out and up. Exhale, hands through heart center and back by your sides. Last time, inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale into that forward fold. Inhale, long spine and exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse, sweep the arms out, up. All the way overhead, press the palms together, bring the hands to the heart and pause. Pressing the thumbs into the sternum, nodding the head towards the fingertips. Appreciating the imprint of all these movements on the body. And then we will begin our standing postures by warming ourselves up, right? With our 20 stand up sit downs. So taking opposite hand to opposite shoulder, getting the feet in a position to support you, knowing that taking a break is absolutely fine. You know your body better than I. Inhale for one and two, three and four, five, six. Seven and eight, nine and ten. Switch bottom arm to the top for eleven and twelve, thirteen and fourteen and fifteen and sixteen. 17 and 18 and 19 and 20. Have a seat. Big breath in through the nose, shrug up. Big sigh out through the mouth as you relax the shoulders down. And we'll find our way to our standing posture. So we'll do our joint rotations, moving the chair to a place that supports you. Finding standing mountain pose. So all the joints aligned, nice tall spine. Take your left foot behind, resting on the top of the toes. Just roll over those toes for one, two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight. Reverse, one and two three and four, five, six, seven, and eight. Bring that foot down next to the other foot and step that right foot back. Same thing on this side for one, two, and three, four, five, and six, seven, and eight. Reverse one and two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight. Bring your feet together. Big toes touch, heels slightly apart, bending the knees, hands above the knees. Begin to roll around the outer edges of your feet, circling the knees and getting a little dip in the knees to the degree that's right for you. For Let's see, we're on three, four, and five, six, seven, and eight, and reverse. One, and two, three, 
and four, five, six, seven, and eight. Knees above the ankles, walk the hands up, keep the chin tucked, step the feet apart, soften the knees, let the chin float to neutral. So we'll do our hip rotations for one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight, reverse, one and two, three and four, five, six, seven and eight. Coming to stillness, keeping the feet wide, knees soft, relax, the arms so wiggle all the tension out of your arms, soften everything, shake out everything, and then find the stillness here before you begin to rotate, excuse me, the torso. And then when you're ready, just let the arms dangle and float from side to side as you rotate the torso. Maybe lifting the opposite heel if you like. I won't count this, we'll just kind of do it until we just can't do it anymore. <laughs> nice little relaxing way to get the body's tension to release. Slowly coming to stillness, letting the rotation stop, letting the arms come naturally to stillness. Great. We'll do three humming forward folds. So our little Brahmari breath, bumblebee breath, so taking a nice breath in, bringing the hands onto the thighs, toes are turned slight, slightly out or straight forward, whatever is most comfortable for you as you take a breath in. Exhale, hum it out as you fold forward. Hmm. Gliding the hands up the legs, coming all the way back up. Once you're there, taking a nice breath in. And humming down. Bringing yourself all the way up. <clears throat> Once you're there, taking a big breath in. And humming it out. Hanging here for a breath or two. So you can hold on to your ankles, you can hold on to your big toes with your peace fingers. Maybe you just kind of bend one knee and straighten the other, getting a nice little stretch in the back of the extended leg. Keeping the navel drawn in to protect your back. If this is too much on your back, you can always come up hands on thighs and do the same movement, just not as intense of a forward fold. Same thing, you're gonna get a nice stretch in the back of your extended leg. And then slowly come to balance. So knees are slightly bent, hands are on your thighs. Take a big breath in and a big sigh out. Bring yourself all the way back up to standing. Draw your heels in significantly, toes pointed out. We're gonna come into goddess pose, sinking and coming out of it five times. So here we go into gentle goddess, hands above the head, palms pressing together. As we exhale, come to cactus arms and sink only to the degree that your hips are happy. Inhale up and exhale, sink. Inhale for three and four and five. Hold on five for five, four, three, two, and one. Great job standing all the way back up and bring your feet together, hands at your heart. We're going to come into Utkatasana. So with Utkatasana, your feet can be um, ankles underneath your knees and, and as is bones, or your big toes can be together. Your feet can be closer together, totally your choice. Take an inhale, arms reach up overhead, 
Exhale, sink the hips, come into that seat, that standing chair pose. Sweep your arms to the right and inhale, rise all the way back up. Exhale, sink into chair, sweep the arms to the left. You can follow along with your head if you like. Inhale, sweep and come back up. Exhale, sweep to the right. Inhale, come back up. And exhale, sweep left. And inhale, rise up. We're gonna do one more on each side. Exhale into chair, arms sweep. Gentle little twist going on here. Inhale up, no force. Exhale over to the left. And inhale back up. Hands to the heart. Pause and notice. Notice and feel what's present. What's shifted, changed, or warmed? And then getting your chair in place in the front of your mat. And the, the top of the chair, the back of the chair can be right there facing you. These are gonna do a couple of balance poses that are gonna maybe require a little bit of help. So <clears throat> we'll start by uh, coming into warrior three. So we're going to step our left foot back, bend our left, step our right foot back and bend our left foot, coming into crescent lunge, bring your hands to your heart. So this in and of itself is a balance pose, but to come into warrior three, we're going to bring our weight into our left foot. So we're going to step the right foot slightly forward and then lift that back leg off the ground. So it might just get off the ground. It might come a little higher. It might be that holding the chair is best for you. You might even bring your arms back to Dekasana arms just to explore and then come back to what works. <laughs> Taking that Bend into that left foot, stepping the right foot back, finding crescent lunge. Inhaling the arms up overhead. Exhaling the hands behind you. Interlacing the fingers, pressing the knuckles back, opening up. So this crescent lunge pose with that open heart can be a challenge on balance. So you can try that or you can lower the back heel coming into warrior one legs if that's more uh, solid for you today. And then wherever you are with your feet, inhale your arms back up. Exhale, hands to heart, step the back foot forward. And then moving to the other side, we're going to step the left foot back, find crescent lunge. We're going to settle into this grounding, this rooting down through the feet and legs, right from the waist all the way down. And then stepping the back foot slightly forward, begin to get your weight over that supporting leg, lift that back foot. If you're comfortable, you can keep your toes down if you're not comfortable. So keep drawing the navel in, keep turning the pubic bone up towards the navel. Really engage the core. And again, explore arms. Find that dristy. Use the chair when you need to. Bending into that front leg, stepping the left foot back, finding either crescent lunge or warrior one, your choice. Inhale the arms up overhead. Exhale the hands behind you, interlace the fingers. Interlace them the uncomfortable way. So once they naturally go where they naturally go, move them over one, go, oh, that's weird. <laughs> Settle into that weirdness and then press the knuckles back, open up the heart. Inhale the arms up overhead. Exhale the hands to the heart. Step the back foot forward. Lovely. Move the chair out of the way. 
come to the top of your mat, we'll come down onto the mat. If you have a strap today, that'd be great. Um, we'll do a little bit of hamstring stretches, but if you don't, we can always modify. We'll make it work. So finding mountain pose, rolling the shoulders up and back, finding that balanced, strong pose of just standing tall. Inhale the arms up overhead. Exhale, hold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, bring your hands to the mat. Step one foot back, drop the knee, and bring the other knee back to meet it. Spread your fingers, bring your wrists underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. And then move into some cat and cows. So for our purposes today, cat and cows don't have to be this perfect up and down. You can rotate the hips, kind of orbit the shoulders over the wrists. So start out maybe with cat and cow and then explore movement, maybe looking over your left shoulder towards your left foot, looking over your right shoulder towards your right foot, maybe stepping the knees back and circling the hips over the knees. So there's so many options and they're discovered by your exploration of your own body. You might even sink back to child, come into a modified up dog, and then again, circling shoulders over wrist, hips over knees. So all I'm doing is suggesting you might be doing something completely different. That's absolutely fine, absolutely fine. Eventually coming to stillness, walk your hands back towards your knees and come to kneeling. We'll do uh, three rounds of kneeling sun salutations. So again, standing in a kneeling mountain pose, all the joints that can be stacked are stacked here. Inhale the arms up overhead and exhale, sink the hips to the heels, bring the hands to the mat, bring the forehead to the mat. If possible, get as close as you can if you can't reach the mat. Inhale, draw yourself up to tabletop and exhale, curl your toes, lift your hips and them up and back to down dog. Inhale the knees back to the mat and exhale, sink the hips back to child. Keeping the arms overhead, inhale the arms up overhead. Exhale the arms back by your side. One round is done. We'll do two more. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, sink the hips. Find child's pose. And inhale to table. Exhale, curl the toes under, send the hips up and back. Find down dog. And inhale the knees back to the mat. Exhale, sink the hips to child. Inhale, bring it all the way up. Exhale, arms by your side. Last round, inhale. And exhale. Inhale to table. And exhale to down dog. Inhale to table. And exhale to child. Inhale, arms sweep up. Maybe a little back bend if that would feel good. Exhale, the arms back down by your sides. Roll your shoulders, bobble your head. And then bring your hands to the mat. Bring a hip to the mat. Find your way to seated. And if you are able to um, find a strap or a belt, bathrobe tie, whatever's around. Go ahead and find that. And lay yourself down on the mat. <clears throat> Once you get there, you might want to roll a little bit, hug yourself. Give yourself a minute to settle the back into the mat. And then bring your right foot down to the ground and take the strap on the left foot. Extend your left foot up towards the ceiling. And begin to draw circles with your heel on the ceiling. Maybe this right knee stays bent, maybe it extends. So totally up to you and your body. 
drawing those circles with the heel on the ceiling, maybe those circles get larger. They might be a little choppy. So maybe over the course of repetition, they smooth out, get a little rounder instead of being egg shapey. <laughs> Reverse direction of the circles. And then pause in the center where your heel is pressing up, your toes are pointing down towards your face. Gently draw the leg back so you don't want to force it. You can even have a little um, bend in your knee. So we all have different tightness in the backs of our legs. So you might be lower to the ground than me. That's fine. All good. So taking the strap in your left hand, flexing the toes of that left foot, turning the toes slightly out, take your right hand on your right hip point, and then just let that left leg fall out to the side. So you might not get to the ground, I don't get to the ground, but let the weight of the leg be supported by your strap, kind of like a little hammock or sling. So you're not putting undue stress on that hip. And press out through the heel. Flex the foot, feel the stretch, and breathe into it. Inhale back up and switch hands on the strap and let that leg cross the body. So you might even roll onto your right hip, drawing that leg across towards the floor on the right, trying to keep your left shoulder anchored if you can. You might feel this in your IT band, the outer edge, the outer. Um, thigh from hip to knee. And then bring that leg back. Bring the knee into your chest, take the strap off, give it a squeeze, bring that right leg in to really match the left, maybe a little rock or movement would feel good. And then bring the left foot down to the ground and take the strap on your right foot. Again, your choice, left foot um, close to your buttocks or extended. If it's extended, activate it. So make that left foot um, active here. Don't just let it flop around. And begin to draw circles on the ceiling with your right heel. Allowing the circles to get larger and smoother and rounder with each repetition. And then reversing direction. And then pressing the heel up towards the ceiling, taking the strap in your right hand, turning the toes slightly out. So you're externally rotating that right leg. Take that leg out to the side as you put your left hand on your left hip kind of reminding you to keep that left buttocks on the ground. If it starts to lift and roll off to the side, just bring your leg back a little bit. And you might notice this side being more open or less open than the other side, more free to move than the other side, or maybe more restricted. Again, taking the weight <coughs> off of your hip, out of your hip joint with the Strap, strap is, is a help here. And then bring that leg up, switch hands on the strap and let that leg fall over to the left. Again, getting into that IT band, you might feel it rather intensely. And bringing the leg back up, bending the knee, removing the strap, bringing the left knee in to meet it, and really giving a nice little massage to that sacrum, that low back. So maybe circling the knees or rocking, whatever gets you nice and deep into that low back.
and then bringing the knees over the hips and letting the shins be parallel to the ground. Bring your hands down by your sides. <clears throat> On an inhale, float the legs to the ceiling, float the arms up towards the ceiling and then back behind you. Exhale, bring everything slowly back to where it began. Three more, inhale to extend the legs, float the arms up and back. And you might play with keeping the arms and the legs moving at the same pace, can be challenging, really takes concentration here. Keep the navel drawn in and the back flat against the mat. You're really working your core here too. So two more of these, inhale up, extend. And exhale back. And last one, extend. And come back to the beginning. Keeping the navel drawn in, the back flat, bring your hands to your knees. So we're going to just extend the legs away from us till the arms are straight and then draw the knees into our chest. So a different way to massage the back, use the core as we move the legs in and out. So the arms are simply a guide to the uh, distance. We're not using our arms to help this movement happen. We're using our core strength. We're, we're using our leg strength as we move. It's almost as if you're pushing. They've got those machines at the gym, you know, where you push them away from you and then come back in. And then hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a nice squeeze and bring your feet back down to the mat. So we're going to come into bridge pose. We'll do uh, three bridges kind of flowing, and then we'll hold in our bridge. If you would like to have a supported bridge, you might want to, if you have a block, uh, have a block nearby or a, or a pillow, rolled blankets or something that will support you as you hold in bridge on our last one. So here we go. We're going to bring our feet close to our buttocks, turn our pubic bone up towards our navel, draw our navel in towards our spine and feel the back flatten against the mat. On an inhale, root down through your feet, engage the muscles in your legs and your glutes, peel yourself up the mat, lifting those hips as high as you can. And exhale, lower from the top down. Keep the tailbone turned up, pubic bone turned up until you get all the way down. Then a little pelvic rock as you push those as -is bones towards the bottom of the mat. Flatten again as you engage the core. Peel the spine and lift. Keep the legs active. And then lower. Tailbone is last to land. A nice little pelvic rock, flattening again as you engage the core, engage the legs and buttocks, lift and lower. On this last one, we're going to hold. So you are the one in charge here, deciding how long to hold. If I have you holding longer than feels good, then come down. So walk your feet close, lift up. You might take your hands and interlace them underneath your torso, rock your torso and tuck your shoulders, <coughs> excuse me, and then really lift the heart up towards the ceiling. Keep the gaze at the ceiling so that your neck is nice and safe. And then reach the tailbone towards the back of the knees or the backs of the shins. Really lengthen the back body. Keep the glutes engaged. And breathe. And even if you're doing a supported bridge, try to keep the muscles engaged a bit. Working the glutes here, hamstrings. And then release your uh, interlace under you if you've got that on 
tuck your shoulder and then let your body come back down to the mat, keeping that core engaged, navel drawn in. Once you land, bring the bottoms of your feet together, let your knees splay open, maybe rock a little bit, find a little massage and then find stillness. If you have blocks and you'd like to support your thighs up near your hips, that's always a, a nice option. Blankets will do, pillows will do. <clears throat> Take big breaths all the way down to the base of the lungs, into the belly. And then guide your legs back together. So bring your knees up towards the ceiling and bring your feet wide. We'll do a couple of little rotations, windshield wiping the knees from side to side here, final little twists. So letting the knees float from side to side. And the next time your knees are over to the left, let them stay there. This final twist, you might even get a little stretch out of it by taking your right hand diagonally up towards the top right corner of your mat, pressing your right knee down towards the bottom left corner of your mat. And this is a nice way to gently end the practice, a gentle twist. So no intensity here, just explore what uh, might still be tight. So a little gentle, curious body scan. And then bringing your knees through center and bringing them over to the other side. Same thing, hold here. You can always put a pillow between your thighs to support this uh, left hip if, if the weight is too much. You can always put a pillow under your bottom uh, thigh, your right thigh, whatever, whatever works here. So this is just an exploration at the end of practice. Take your left arm, reach it to the top left corner of your mat and press that left knee towards the bottom right. So feel that stretch to the left side body. And then a little scan on this side. Guiding your knees back together up towards the ceiling. One last little hug before you lay yourself out for Shavasana. So before you bring yourself to stillness, maybe you do some wiggles, some movement, some inversion, letting your knees, or I mean your feet move up towards the ceiling. And after you've moved enough to suit yourself, getting yourself prepared for stillness, just get comfortable. So maybe you cover yourself with a blanket. It's a cool day. Might feel good. I'm gonna put blocks under my knees here. And once you find that posture for Shavasana, just take a big breath in through your nose, a big sigh out through your mouth. Let the weight of the back of the head and shoulders, back and buttocks, calves and heels just sink into the mat. So the reading today from Mark Nepo is called The Life of Experience. And the quote is even if one glimpses God, there is still cuts and splinters and burns along the way. So often we anticipate a reward for the uncovering of truth. For effort, we expect money and recognition. For sacrifice and kindness, 
we secretly expect acceptance and love. For honesty, we expect justice. Yet as we all know, the life of experience unfolds with a logic all its own. And very often, effort is seen and kindness is embraced and the risk of truth is held as the foundation of how humans relate. However, the reward for breathing is not applause, but air. And the reward for climbing is not promotion, but new sight. And the reward for kindness is not being seen as kind, but the electricity of giving that keeps us alive. It seems the closer we get to the core of all being, the more synonymous the effort and its reward. Who could have guessed? The reward for uncovering the truth is the experience of honest being. The reward for understanding is the peace of knowing. The reward for loving is being the carrier of love. It all becomes elusively simple. The river's sole purpose is to carry water. And as the force of the water deepens and widens the riverbed, the river fulfills its purpose even more. Likewise, the riverbed of the heart is worn open over time to carry what is living. All this tells us that no amount of thinking can eliminate the wonder and pain of living. No wall or avoidance or denial, no cause or excuse can keep the rawness of life from running through us. While this may at times seem devastating, it's actually reassuring. Because while the impermanence of life, if fixed on, can be terrifying, leaving us preoccupied with death, the very same imper in permanence, if allowed its infinite frame, can soothe us with the understanding that even the deepest pain will pass. <clears throat> so what Mark suggests, bring into view a recent moment of disappointment. Was there a particular outcome or response you were secretly hoping for? Rather than focusing on the fact that what you hoped for didn't happen, try to understand what it is that you're in your heart, in the heart of what you were hoping for. Was it being heard, being accepted, being loved, being seen as someone of value or simply the need to be held? Accepting this disappointment, try to understand what you received from the life of experience.
So you might allow your awareness to move back to your breath. Allowing each new breath to be fuller, more satisfying than the breath before it. And each new breath out to be more of a letting go. Bringing awareness back to the physical body, wiggling fingers and toes. Circling ankles and wrists. Or letting the head gently drift from side to side. And if it would feel good to take a nice big stretch, go ahead and reach the arms overhead, extend the legs long. Take a big breath in through the nose. Sigh it out through your mouth. Draw your knees into your chest for that final squeeze of the practice. Rolling to one side or the other. Staying on your back, if that's better for you. And just giving a little scan. Making note of what might have shifted or changed since you started the practice. Finding one small thing that you can take from your practice today out into the world. And leaving one small thing behind. Maybe it is that disappointment. Taking the lesson from it with you, leaving the disappointment behind. And when you're ready to end your practice, Bring yourself to a comfortable seat. And once you're there, bring your hands to your heart. So we bring our hands to our hearts, reminding us to fill our hearts with kindness and compassion. And to our lips, reminding us to speak words of kindness and compassion. To our third eye, reminding us to expand our thoughts of kindness and compassion towards ourselves as well as others. And in honor of the light that shines in each one of us, the light that unites us all, we bow and say namaste. Thank you for being here.